morning everybody it is marissa also known as the crafty heifer i want to welcome you back to my channel if you have been here before if you are new here welcome we are uh, working on our crochet along today this is the crafty heifer crochet along um several people are participating and i just want to say thank you for that i know a lot of us are really enjoying this we've got new crocheters we've got old hats not old people but old hats at doing it um and everybody seems to be having a really good time this is my first ever crochet along so i hope that you are enjoying it as always i am available for questions for help for anything that you need as far as this goes and anything else really um what we're doing today is um you should have should be finished before you start watching this uh, tutorial you should be finished with the second row so this is going to be the last actual tutorial for the crochet along because after this after we start the third row you guys will be able to finish the rest of the blanket so all of the rest of our uh, live streams are actually going to be um, just hanging out and crocheting together and getting the blankets finished it's not a race take your time work at your own pace um, I am going to be doing the lives for the crocheting during the lives. Let me put it that way. I'll be crocheting during the lives through uh, the eight week mark that we had set out in the beginning. So that should be about, that's a row a week. So most of us can keep up with that pace. If you can't, don't panic because the videos are up and they will be there. So the first thing I'm going to show you today, because somebody had mentioned it, um, is that we have all these ends on our project so this is my project i've completed row two we have all of these ends hanging off of our project so i'm going to show you what you're going to do with the ends of the blanket and i'm going to show you on a lighter color just because it will be much easier to see so i'm going to use this lavender color that i have here so what you're going to do and what you're going to need you can do this a couple of different ways this is called sewing in or weaving in your ends i know there's a lot of people that really really hate doing this part I actually really enjoy doing this so one of the things that I had told you in a previous tutorial was to make sure that you leave at least an inch on your ends when you snip them I tend to leave mine a little bit longer than that um, as you can see I, I prefer long um, endings uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to sew these in now what I use is this I, this is a tapestry needle or tapestry needle however you want to say it I use a tapestry needle to sew my ends in. Um, you can find these. I think my two pack came from Michael's or Joann's or somewhere like that for just a couple of dollars. Um, the thing about these is they are they've got a blunt end on them, so you're not going to poke yourself like you would with a normal needle. Let me see if I can get it to focus. So as you can see, that is a blunt end. I can stick myself with it, and I'm not going to bleed. So that's a tapestry needle. So I use those. You can find yarn needles, they're plastic. Um, they're like this kind of plastic. Um, and they're you know thicker like this is. You can find those in any department where they sell yarn, crochet stuff, uh, knitting things. And you can also, if you don't have any of that and you don't want to go acquire those supplies, you can always use the hook that you already have. I don't personally like the hook because I don't feel like you can get it in tight enough, but I'm going to show you both ways. So we're going to start with the hook. And basically what you're going to do is you are going to come in, you go into a stitch and you're going to basically just wind your tail through these stitches. So I'm going to do it just like that. Go into another stitch grab your tail and pull it through just like you were doing a slip stitch basically and you can kind of move in through these different stitches you just find a stitch hook your tail and go on through and you can do this you can work your way down the more direction changes that you have the harder it's going to be for this yarn to unwind at some point so if you go through change directions a couple of times go through some of these already established stitches i don't like to do this because it's very easy to um accidentally hook some of your finished stitches with your hook 
and accidentally pull them loose a little bit. They're not going to come apart completely, but you can pull them to where they kind of stick up weird. So I just go through and you can just do it like that. And when you feel like you've had enough, like that's more than enough, I've gone down three different clusters. You just do this and you just snip as close as you can without cutting your project. Because if you do cut your project thread, it will come unraveled. Okay, so this is basically just a whole lot of knots is what crochet is. It's just a whole lot of different knots for your fabric. And that's why it's so easy to frog it. But that also means that if any of these get cut or broken, it's gonna un start unraveling. So you just do that and then I just kind of tuck my end in as best I can so that you don't see it. Okay, so there you can see, came out of the back, but that's okay. So you just work it in to those stitches like so. Okay, so that's the first way. That's the way to do it with your hook. Just be careful that you don't pull one of your stitches loose. All right, now there's the other end. The way that I do it with a tapestry needle is you're gonna take your needle, I fold just the end over, work your yarn in, which is kind of difficult sometimes, and then you're basically just going to sew this through your stitches using that needle. And again, you're gonna change directions as much as possible. So there you go, I pulled it straight across. Now I'm gonna go down through some of these stitches, like so, change directions again, get in through some of these. I just find this much easier and faster way to sew in. Sorry, I put that in. <laughs> used to stick it in my mouth to hold it. And then you just snip, just like the last time. So you can see there, and then let's find another. Here's a corner. Here. I do like to sew in as I go. I don't tend to leave these um, until the entire blanket is finished, just because it does take forever if you do it that way. So I will go in uh, probably this afternoon and sew all of these ends in before I start the third row or really get started on the third row other than what I'm going to do for the tutorial. Um, but yeah, this is based, just basic sewing you guys through here. Make sure that you don't pull your corners out or your stitches in a weird configuration and I like to sew my ends in obviously if it's lavender I'm gonna sew it into the lavender part if it's black I'm gonna sew it into the black um, just because that's going to hide that tail going through there if I had sewed it through the black you would be able to see that purple inside of those stitches so keep your colors consistent so this black tail I'm gonna sew this way into this black section this purple, I'm going to sew into the purple. Black will go this way. So I hope that makes sense. Um, I think that would be a fairly obvious, but I did want to go ahead and say it just in case uh, somebody didn't realize. So yeah, you're going to just take your ends and you're going to sew them into the color they belong to. So purple to purple, black to black. This lavender will come in here. This black will come over here. Things like that. Okay. So this is my um, not the end I started on. This is the other end. So I'm just going to kind of show you guys here as we go. And I'm just going to fold it in on itself. So you can just kind of get an idea of what it looks like. There's that, and then this down here is the end that we started on, okay? So this was our, this over here was our very first, um, no, this over here, sorry, <laughs> was our very first starting stitch. This is where we started the blanket at the very beginning. And that is where we're going to go back to. So you need to make sure that's the end that you're on, okay? So this is row one, this is row two. So what we're going to do, just like we did in the last one, Row one, row two, 
So you want to get your row two in your corner. This is where you just finished stitching, where you just closed off your row two, okay? And you're going to go back to this corner. And um, you are going to start stitching very similar to what we did in row two. And because this blanket doesn't really matter which side you start stitching on, as long as you start stitching in the right place. So I'm on to my second partial. I had, this is just a leftover skein of yarn that I had from another project. I did go through one entire seven ounce skein uh, for these two rows of my neutral color. So I may have underestimated how much of the neutral that you were going to need, and especially if you made any changes to your blanket, at any point you may need more um, yarn. So I had, though I had purchased one, I knew I had this partial one, which is almost a full regular skein. This was a, originally a jumbo. Um, so I knew I had most of this one, and I will probably end up having to go back and get a third. So what you're going to do is you're going to find the cornermost stitch here, do a slip stitch, okay, and just like we did on row two, you're going to chain three. All right, so there's three. You're going to go between your two clusters. Oops. Try that again. Go between your two clusters slip stitch, chain three, and flip your blanket. And you're gonna do this really basically just like you did the other, the second row, uh, first row to second row, it's pretty much the same concept, okay? So you're going to do three double crochets like so to make your cluster. You're on an edge, so you're going to chain six. Five, six, and then you're going to start increasing. So there's one. There's two. And there's three double crochets. Okay. Flip it and slip stitch and chain three. And then in the top of this chain here, we're going to do our three double crochets. There's one, there's two. Whoops. Sorry guys, bumped my lamp. And there is three. You're going to attach this to your already established boundary. Chain three. Attach to the next one up. Slip stitch, chain three, and flip your work, okay? So it really is not any different other than you just have to make sure that you're starting in the same place, okay? You're going to come up to where the purple stops. Should be eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you're going to make your eight, make sure it's only eight wide, just like we did the last time. And that's how you start your row three, guys. It's this is your basic blanket. You have all of the tools, all of the skills at this point to finish this blanket. If you're still getting hung up, if you still need help, that's okay. You know, contact me, email, messenger on Facebook, Instagram, all of those ways. I do check them multiple times a day. Um, today is football uh, Sunday. It is Super Bowl Sunday, so I am going to a friend's house to watch the game, so I probably won't be able to get back to you for a few hours um, this afternoon and this evening, but I will get back to you um, as soon as I can. But basically, you guys have the skills now to finish this blanket. Go at your own pace, do what you would like to do. You're gonna stick with the um, pattern. So my pattern says, 
that if I'm starting on this end, it's going to be black. And then I'm going to go color B because this is my color A. So black, color B, black, color C, black, color D, and just continue the pattern in the same way. There is a link of the actual picture of the pattern so that you can see. Now remember, first row, we went up. We started here and we went up. The second row, you're coming down. And the third row, we're going back up. So it's zigzagging each way. So you're going to go up the pattern, down the pattern, up the pattern, down the pattern, okay? So on odd number rows, you're going up, and on even number rows, you're going down. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, let me, uh, let me know, and I will try to explain it a little bit better. But with the direction change, you should be taking your, um, your V should be going the same way as this is. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Um, I will get back to you here in just a second. Okay, so I came back. I added just a little bit on over here. So this is where we're working on. This is our third row, the start of our third row. So I figured out a better way to explain this. So if you see, this is our original starting point. This is where the blanket originally started. These stitches are going this way. When we added in row two, the stitches are going this way so that they meet in the middle. Row three, they need to go the same way as row one. So they're gonna go this way again. So it's this way. We changed and came up from the top and came this way to make sure our stitches changed directions. And now because we are going back in the original direction from right to left, our stitches had to change direction, which is why we start on this end. So on the odd rows, you're going to start on your original starting point. That end of the blanket is where you will start your row. So for rows one, three, five, and seven, you're going to start on this end of the blanket so that your stitches go right to left. Rows two, four, six, and eight, you're going to start on the opposite end of the blanket so that your stitches go from left to right. I hope that made more sense than my babbling from earlier. But you can see here, these stitches are going in this direction and these are going in this direction. That's what gives you that really great chevron shape to the blanket. Um, but because we change directions, we start at different ends. So row one, the odd rows start here. The even rows start up at the other end of the blanket. If you have any questions about that, um, I would suggest marking the original end of your blanket. So if you sew in your ends, maybe leave this one out since this is the original end. Um, you can do different things. You can put a different colored stitch marker in there if you have it. But I would mark where you originally started your blanket and make sure that you know which corner that is. If you followed the pattern, you can always go back and figure out that this black is where we started. And um, each of your odd rows will end with this black. Your neutral color, so each of your odd rows are gonna end in the neutral color. And your even rows will end in a, a color A. It looks like our color A, color B, color C, or color D. So we'll end in a color even rows and your odd rows will end with your neutral. So that's another way to tell where you are in the blanket. Again, as always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I am here to help. I want to say thank you um, to all of you that are participating, to anyone that has subscribed. Um, I do really appreciate your subscriptions. We're going to keep going with this. Um, people seem to really be enjoying it. Um, I'll try to come up maybe with some fun things, some other fun things for us to do. And um, if you are not subscribed, please consider uh, subscribing. Bring that bell to get all the notifications when I go live on Wednesdays, when I put up a new video. There, This video will go up on Monday the 3rd. Um, we go live on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Central Time and usually another video on Friday or Saturday. 
So, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope to see you all again soon and to talk with you all again soon. And uh, I'm going to go football now. So, I will talk to you guys later. And remember, until next time, craft like someone left the barn door open. Bye, guys.